All right, so question 14, we have some composite functions here. We did those uh, together. Um, and we have some composite functions where you have to find an actual value, and we have some composite functions where you just have to in input one function into the other. So uh, we always work from the inside out with composite functions if you have the numerical value here. So for me, what I would do is first of all, find f at zero. So if that's the case, I put zero into my function here, f of x. So it's gonna be zero squared plus one. So I know that f at zero is equal to one. So that means that this piece inside here should be one. So if I do that, I can replace f of zero with my value, which I got. When I do this, and now what's my function for g of x? Well, it's three x plus two. But we have a value for x, which is 1. So if I insert in that into there, it'll be 3 times 1 plus 2. So there we are, 5. So this here gives us 5 there, OK? So we have g of f of 0 is equal to 5. That's all you had to do for that one. And in this case, in the second one, it's going to be the same, but you're going to input 1 into my g function. But we already have that here. Look at this. It's nice. They already given us g of 1. So we know that this g of 1, we don't have to recalculate it when we already know that it's 5. And now this bit here, this is going to be the composite function. I'm going to put 5 into f. So I'm going to have f of 5 in this case is equal to, well, if you put 5 into your f of function here, let's rewrite it just to make sure we have it correct. Now, if you put five into the x here, it'll be five squared plus one, so we have 26. So in this case, f of g of one is equal to 26, that's what we have, all right? So they have different notations here. You might've been confused. I'm gonna use this notation here or this notation here just to make sure it's clear on the tests, okay? Uh, next, g of g of x. So I'm gonna rewrite it here so it's easier. And my function, this outside function g is 3x plus 2. So what they're asking me is they want to put everything. So everywhere that I see an x here, they want me to replace it with this g function. So all you need to do in this case is go 3 times. Well, what is your g function? Well, we already know this is 3x plus 2. So 3x plus 2. And then we have the plus 2 at the very ending here. So if we do that, we get 9x. This will give me 6, and I'm going to add it to 2, so I have plus 8 in this case. So there's my composite fun function g of g of x, OK? Finally, we have f of g of x. So once again, I will rewrite this so it's a little bit easier to understand, like so. And then my f function, the outside, that's what's going to be here. And my f function is x squared plus 1. But now, once again, we want to insert everywhere we see an x with this g function. So I have f of g of x uh, equals to, well, what is our g of x? So I go squared plus 1. So my g of x in this case is 3x plus 2. So I have 3x plus and then you can go ahead and expand this and uh, and uh, you should get if you expand this 9x squared 2 times 3 6x plus another 6x is 12x and then 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 so this should be your final uh, composite function for this one here all right so that's question 14 Let's look at question 15. I'm going to expand the canvas so I have a little bit more room here. So we have this function. It says find the inverse so we know already what we have to do. We're going to replace all the x's with y's and y's with x's. So the first thing I ask you guys to do when you're doing your inverse functions is write f of x as y. That's the easiest thing. So we have 1 plus x over 3 minus x. That's the first step. The second step is switch your x's and y's. So I'm going to change this to an x, and then I'm going to have 1 minus, or sorry, 1 plus x, sorry, 1 plus y over 3 minus y. And now we need to isolate for y. So I'm going to cross multiply first. 
So we get 3x minus 3y is equal to 1 plus y. I'm going to put all everything with my y terms on the same side. So I'm going to keep this negative 3y here. I'm going to throw this over. So I'm going to have another uh, positive y, like so. And I'm going to put the 3x onto that side. So uh, ah, I made a mistake here. 3 times x is 3x. Negative y times x is negative m. Okay. Let me fix this here. Let me start all over again. Apologies. Too fast. 3 times x is 3x. Negative y times x is negative xy. Equals 1 plus y. There we go. Now. I'm going to keep everything with y's on one side, like I said earlier. And now we should be correct. And I'm going to put everything on x's without the y on the other side. So this becomes negative 3x plus 1. And now here is where we factor out a y. So you end up with negative x minus 1 is equal to 3x plus 1. And then I'll write it up here, our final answer. If we divide both sides by negative x minus 1, negative x minus 1, you should have y is equal to 3x, negative 3x plus 1, negative 3x, I'm missing some of my symbols, all over negative x minus 1. So that is our inverse function. And you can write it at the very end. I asked you guys to do this to show me that you have your inverse function. You change your y back to f minus 1 because that is our notation for inverse function. So here you go. That's the end of that. So that is our question 15. A little bit of algebra you had to know from the beginning of the year. And question 16, I can do this one. It's a quick sketch. These ones get more and more complicated. I'm going to try and give you sketches that are not so difficult, but I'll give you ideas on how to do them anyways, just in case. Here, the best thing to do is know that uh, if you have to draw the inverse function, both the x and y's, they always switch. So they become y and x. So I start plotting points. So here I have negative 1, 0. And if I switch that, it will be 0, negative 1. So I know the inverse point is there. Here I have 0, 1. So if I change that, it'll be 1, 0, which is about there. And I also know that this sketch here should be a mirror around the line y is equal to x. So if I draw the line y is equal to x, I'll try and draw it as good as I can. That's a 45 degree line, something like this here. So if this is the case, my, um, my inverse should mirror this thing here. So they always cross at this point here, your, in, your inverses. So it should be something like, let's see if I can do this, like so, in and then out like that, right? So it gets a little bit complicated sometimes to sketch them, but they should be a mirror around that thing there, okay? So that's what we have. And then it says, sketch the graphs of this and this one now. If you take the composite function of an inverse, you automatically get y is equal to x. That's in theory. So we've actually drawn y is equal to x. So that's good. I've already created that question there. So this bit is theory. If you take the, the uh, in, uh, composite function of its inverse, you should get this mirror y is equal to x. And there's those questions there.